Hey everyone, we here at Line 6 are very pleased to announce the birth of Helix 2.0 firmware, and that means we're also releasing the full-featured version of the Helix Editor. So if this video lags behind the release of both those products, it is probably because it took me about three weeks to clean off my desktop in order to show it to people in the world. Sorry about that, if that happens. In any case, to launch the editor at the moment, I've got it uh, in my dock, so click it open and you can see this is your home screen. At the moment, I don't have a preset loaded, but on the left-hand side, you can see this is where my file browser is. So I can look through set lists here. I can import impulse responses here, which we'll get to in a second, and I can select and export things as well. So if this is my user bank and I want to export it for something like a firmware update or just to make sure I can load it onto another Helix, you can say export set list, or if you want, you can export a bundle and it will spit out the entire contents of Helix into one file. If you notice, I've got a Helix floor processor connected over USB and it is running firmware 2.0, so that makes it very easy to see. Now over here, you can see that this is my signal chain because I have nothing loaded at the moment. It's blank, but if I select a block, it shows me all of the stuff that's possible and I can just select anything I want, double click it, and now I've got my tremolo, shows me all of the parameters for that. I have an on off button here and also one here. So I can just do it from anywhere I like, which is great. Now, anything that you click on, it will show you the parameters for that. So even if I click on the input tab, for instance, there we have the guitar, the aux, and the variax inputs. It's telling me that that is what is feeding this path. And if I click on the output, it's also showing me what I have selected. I've selected quarter inch, XLR, and digital USB 1 and 2 as my output sources. And that is why all the jacks show up here. That is the default, by the way. Now, if I just load, the first preset comes up. It's this. Which is nice. Now, as I just click around, you can see these are the parameters. I can drag and drop these. If I decided that I want the distortion in front of the dynamics, I can do that, drag it. Now you'll notice that the screen looks like it's taking a long time. The hardware makes all these changes immediately, but because it's over USB, it takes a second for the screen to update. So you don't have to worry about, if you're watching this, uh, it is not that Helix is taking so long to make these changes, it's that the screen is taking a while to update. Don't worry about that. Now let's say that I've got the Minotaur here. If I go to my bypass assign page, uh, it actually has my custom foot switch label here because it's assigned to the foot switch on my Helix floor. Now you can see it says Minotaur. If I want, I can use my actual keyboard to rename that to something more interesting. So Ben's Nappy Hade is now on my floor. And if I decide I don't like that, I can just remove it and get back to my normal Minotaur label, which is great. The controller assign is here and the command center is here which is great. Now, if I want to import some presets of my own that I backed up, I've just obviously done the 2.0 update myself. So I can just go to import set list. It says you can't revert this, no problem. I agree with that. I'm gonna use my later June tweaked set list and now it is importing it. You can see that it's populating the set list with all of the presets that were in my bank that I basically uploaded to the computer to back them up before I did my firmware update. And you should do that too before you do it. So if we just select one of these presets, you can see this is the how it all began preset. This is the one uh, that I basically used for the beginning of my NAMM demo. If you saw that video, it's very wet. nice delays in it, has all sorts of nice effects in it, it's very wet. But what I'd like to do is turn it into something that's a little bit more usable for me live. So one of the major features in Helix 2.0 firmware is snapshots. And what snapshots are are basically eight presets that are within one preset. So you can change anything you want as long as you don't change the modules inside of the preset and you have nothing to worry about in terms of spillover for delays or reverbs. At the very basic behavior, it's very easy. All you have to do is navigate to another snapshot and change stuff. Any of the bypass states are automatically remembered. And if you want to, you can assign parameters to be moved as well. And if you want more information about that, you can go up to line6.com and download the Helix 2.0 manual. 
So what I want to do is I want to have a clean sound here on snapshot one, and then on snapshot two, I want to turn it into a lead sound. So what I'm going to have to do is for snapshot two, if I go over here, you see it automatically turns this reverb off, but I need to turn this reverb on. And if you look at this delay down here at the level, you can see that right now it's loud, so the delay is on, but in snapshot one, it's turned off. So I'm going to basically turn on this delay, turn on this reverb, turn off this reverb, this delay is not even playing right now, and I also need to turn on the distortion and the EQ so that when I go to my lead patch, I get that great sound. Now, one thing I, you might be noticing, if I turn these things on from my Helix floor, you might be wondering how it is possible that I'm moving the mouse and also taking this. Well, it's actually because I'm barefoot today. So any of you who have heard me talk about the dangers of playing in a band with a flutist or flautist, uh, if you play barefoot, uh, yes, it will actually update. You might want to turn that off. So I've got my distortion now turned on a snapshot two. I'll turn on snapshot one, I'll play some little parts, I'll play some little plucked harmonics, and then when I go to snapshot two, it's automatically going to kick into my lead sound and change a bunch of parameters at once for me, which is really great. <laughs> So you see that there's no spillover issues. Any of the effects that you have set to trails, no matter what happens in your snapshot, will trail off normally. It's a very powerful feature. If you need more information about that, make sure you go up to line6.com and download the manual. You might remember that I mentioned impulses. So over here you've got the places where you can load impulse responses. So I've got a preset here that I'll load so we can check out some of those impulse responses. So here's the IR loader. You can see that it's got a few at the moment, only two, right? So if we look at our impulses, there's only two loaded, but I can select between those here. So the first sound is this kind of thing. Kind of nice. So if we have some more impulses that we want to load, we can just select an empty guy here, say import, go to your Helix IRs, I've got my own hammer presets I just bought yesterday. And let's see here, maybe T2 Studio Vintage. And now I have a third option. So here's what number two sounds like. very powerful feature. You can load any impulse responses that are compatible with Helix. So that should show you just how cool the new Helix editor is for Helix Floor and Helix Rack. If you have those pieces of hardware, definitely back up your presets first and then go up to line6.com and uh, do the upgrade procedure. It's free for you if you have the hardware and it's great, man. Snapshots alone are going to be awesome for you people. There's some new amps, there's some new effects, all sorts of new stuff. So thanks very much for your time. Cheers.